Prigozhin says Wagner will not sign any contract with Russian defense minister. Here's a summary of the article. Authenticate users, apply security measures, and prevent spam and abuse, and if you do not want us and our partners to use cookies and personal data for these additional purposes, click, reject all. If you would like to customize your choices, click, manage privacy settings. You can change your choices at any time by clicking on the privacy and cookie settings or privacy dashboard links on our sites and apps. This post received a score of 10,000 with an upvote ratio of 96%. Here are the top comments in response to this article. Prigozhin should take his army to the Kremlin and go tell that to the defense minister in person. S. Y. S. In this scenario, everyone wins. Prigozhin is a bigger war criminal than Putin could dream of. Putin gives orders. Prigozhin is on the front committing atrocities in person. The devil you know is sometimes better. Prigozhin can't manage the oligarchs. If Prigozhin somehow topples Putin, it will lead to a massive civil war, which would be fantastic for Ukraine. He'll lose the Caucasus immediately, and might not get control of major Russian cities, especially St. Petersburg. A direct clash between Wagner and the Maud is an immediate victory for Ukraine. Cynically, Prigozhin doesn't have to topple the oligarchy. They would probably all be relieved by someone else coming in winding down the SMO and consolidating their gains. What you were probably thinking about is the Siloviki, folks like Patrashev or Botnikov, with KGB, Czechist connections, the old money, faction of the police, intelligence complex. Men with equal or greater professional experience with violence hundreds of thousands of of state security forces of various flavors and a distinct dislike for the fact that he is an outsider, a crass critic of the institution, and by some accounts a queer and a literal whore. Greater than and by some accounts a queer and a literal whore. Wait what? So before his meteoric rise to power, Prigozhin was a common thug and he went to jail for robbery. The story goes that while in prison, Prigozhin was a bottom rather than a top. The next tranche is that he didn't necessarily need to be raped but would directly trade sexual favors for goods and services. The farthest out assertions I have seen is a, it seemed like he might have even enjoyed his work and or b, that he actually carved himself out a small power base among the lower, lowest rungs of prison society by trading favors of that sort until he became a more general sort fixer, broker. Sounds like Kremlin propaganda. Someone enlighten me please. How does this affect Wagner's antics abroad if they are signed up as actual Russian military group? Some of their African missions are funded through local governments not Russian ministries. Also Prigozhin uses them to protect gold mines he owns in some parts of Africa. I understand that aspect. I guess what I'm asking is if Wagner is no longer private and actually signed on as part of the Russian mod, even though it's known they act as part of the Russian government, what ramifications will come of the Russian government operating in foreign countries? This video was automatically created by Reddit to speech. The article and comments in this video were selected from Reddit according to their upvotes, and any paraphrasing was performed by smmry.com, without any human intervention.